All right, we know going back to school can be stressful for both students and parents. There are things you can do to make the transition less daunting. Emily Mandigo is here from or or Oakland. Oakland Family yes. Services. Okay, good. Oakland Family Services. Uh, Emily, you're a social worker. You deal with both parents and kids, right? Yes. So let's just talk about any time you shift from summer to back to school, there's that change, which can be both good and exciting, but it can also bring some fear and anxiety, right? Definitely. I like to look at it thinking about kids have to get a new boss, a new job, everything every year. So thinking about that as a parent, mm. how stressful that could be as a parent. And that's happening every year for our kids. So how can we minimize that? How can we look at different ways to not make that as stressful? So I would imagine that in part, it's just doing preparation, being ready putting clothes out the night before, being prepared with lunch routines and all that, right? Exactly. Making routines, starting routines before they start back to school. How you can look at getting back to bed early, setting that up. Summer gets really lax, yeah. so how can we get back to getting back to school? I know at our household the night before, I realized we didn't have any cereal, so what are we gonna do for breakfast? How can I make sure that I'm in check and have everything ready so that my son does too. I have found that writing things down on a calendar um, or whatever, a piece of paper, whatever you got, um, but sitting down with your student and kind of go, let's map out our week and let's let's talk about what we're gonna, even it can be what you're gonna wear, right? But yes. also, what are our activities? What's the schedule? Again, like a job that yeah. I do a lot better if I know what am I doing today? What are my meetings? Same for kids with looking at homework and how worrying that can be. I don't know how much I'm gonna have. How am I gonna fit it in? Okay, well, we've got 20 minutes here that we can do something. Then you've got your after school activity. Don't forget that you've gotta have your soccer stuff out. And then there's 20 minutes here that we can do it too. So planning things out that how you would for your work day for them for their school day and after that. How important is meal planning, which is something I always aspired to do, <laughs> and I never really got there, but I would imagine that, it, I mean, I know that's a big stressful component for busy working parents or whatever the situation is. Um, if you can find a free day or a free couple hours and plan it can. out, right? That makes a huge difference too. And snacks, not just thinking about kids are so active during the day. They've got gym, they're with their friends, they're doing a lot. So when they get home from school, what snacks do you have? What are you doing for dinner? And even them knowing that ahead of time, they know what to expect when, they can, when they're coming home. If they don't know what's gonna be happening at school, at least they know when they're coming home what to expect. So that worry that might be happening at school, you know that it can kind of be settled when they're home. Are there red flags to look out for? How do you know if you're, you know, there's gonna be some normal uh, anxiety, I guess, that comes with returning to school, but when do you know that it's reached a risky level? when it's continuing. So the first week you expect things to be a little overwhelming, a little daunting for kids. But past that, if it's going on two weeks a month, that's time to talk to a professional. First talking to the school. Maybe the kid is doing great in school and they're expressing worry beforehand and afterhand, but when they're there, they're fine. Maybe they're playing off your own worry and that's where that's coming mm -hmm. from. So talking to the school first, seeing how things are at school. If it's fine, then talking to your kid. Don't avoid worry. Just embrace it and confront it. Have those open conversations. If it's something that's going on at school and at home, and it's lasting for more than two weeks, seeking out some therapy for your child and looking in that direction. A good advice, and it, how do people reach you guys? We are at Oakland Family Services, our website is oaklandfamilyservices.org. We have a great social media too that will have suggestions and tips for things. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, our phone number too that's on the screen. Very good. Well, thank you, Emily. Uh, it's important information we get to keep the conversation going, right? Control the controllables. Uh, L.